Today we're going to talk about a very special event that took place in the Bible. But before we do, I want to show you something that is kind of a neat little trick. Have you ever seen a raisin dance? Hmm, maybe the question I should ask is, do you think a raisin can dance? Well, let's just see if we can make a raisin dance. It might sound strange, but let me show you what I mean. I have some raisins here. I'll take a handful of them. They look sort of shriveled up, don't they? Did you know that they used to be grapes? Then they got dried and they turned into raisins. Watch what happens when I drop them into this glass. Are you watching? Watch very carefully. They go to the bottom and they come back up. Keep watching. Watch, them. they're rising, they're ascending to the top. It is so awesome, it's like they're dancing, right? Yes, all right. Those raisins are really excited about being in the glass. They go to, they rise to the top, they ascend, they go back down, they do it again and again and again. They're excited. And our Bible story today has some really exciting things happening in it too. The raisins ascended to the top of the glass. Have you ever heard that word before? Ascended means something is going up. Like an elevator ascends up to the next floor. An airplane ascends up into the sky. A hot air balloon ascends up into the clouds. There was a special time in the Bible when Jesus actually did that. Today, we're going to be talking about Ascension Day, the time that Jesus ascended into heaven. These raisins that I had before appeared to have all of their juicy life out of them. They had been drained away. They looked kind of dried up, but they got new power when I dropped them into the glass. In this week's story, not only are we going to hear and learn about Jesus' ascension into heaven, but we're going to learn about a special gift that the disciples would be receiving soon after the ascension that would equip them to do the job that Jesus wanted them to do. They're going to have the power to tell others the good news, that Jesus came, that he died, that he rose, and that he will come back again. The disciples will be getting the power to teach people how to be followers of Jesus and how to obey his commandments. It's a great gift. Has there any, ever been a time when you have felt totally abandoned? Lonely? Lost? Like maybe you were shopping with your family and you got distracted. And when you turned around, your family was gone. How did you feel? Lonely? Lost? Scared? Yeah, you could have felt a little scared. When you were reunited with your family, when you looked around and you found them again, your feelings totally changed. You became relieved, you became comforted, you were happy, and then you realized they had never really left you. Jesus' disciples had been following him for three long years. They heard him teach about God's kingdom, they watched him perform miracles. So how do you think they felt when he was nailed to the cross and his body was put into a tomb? I'm sure that they were scared, confused, and sad. You probably had the same feelings that you did when you couldn't find your family in the store. They had believed that Jesus was God's promised Messiah but now he was dead and his body was sealed in the tomb. But after three days, the news of the resurrection spread and again, they were happy. 
their confusion, even though they might still be a little skeptical, turned into joy and surprise, and they were excited, just like you felt when you found your family. Feelings are not always the truth of what is really happening in the situation. The disciples probably felt ab abandoned, but yet that was not the truth because Jesus told them that he was going to suffer, that he was going to die, and that he would rise again in three days. So even though they knew it was going to happen when they actually saw it happen, they didn't know what to think. They, couldn't, they forgot the truth that Jesus had told them. Sometimes feelings of fear grip us, it's like sadness or loneliness. It clouds our hearts to the truth that God has spoken to us from his word. When we have feelings that seem to overwhelm us, we sometimes forget God's promises. And that's when we need to grab our Bibles, we need to search the scriptures, we need to read about the promises that God has given to us. Because God's promised that when we're lonely, he's going to be there. When we're sick, he's going to comfort us. When we're angry, he promises us that he will make everything right. When we're worried, God says that we can cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. Our Bible story today is from the New Testament, the book of Acts and the Gospel of Luke. 1 Corinthians, also in the New Testament, tells us that during the 40 days following Jesus' resurrection, Jesus appeared to over 500 people. He did that for two reasons. Number one, to show them that he really was alive. And number two, to teach them more about God's kingdom. In our lesson today, we are looking at the last time that Jesus was on this earth and his ascension into heaven. Jesus knew that he was going to be leaving earth very soon. He directed his 11 disciples to go to the Mount of Olives outside the town of Bethany for one final meeting with them. And when they arrived, Jesus appeared. His disciples had been with him often enough since his resurrection that they began to find some hope. Hope that had gone away after he had been crucified and his body had been sealed in the tomb. The disciples had hoped for three years that he was going to be the Messiah that had been written, around, written about for thousands of years. They thought that this Messiah was going to save Israel from the harsh governments and from the other people that hated them. Jesus had tried to tell them that this was not his plan. He had a bigger plan. They couldn't even imagine it. They could not comprehend what Jesus was really up to. And so they asked him, Lord, is this the time for you to give the people of Israel their kingdom again? Oh, they wanted so much for Jesus to say, yes, this is it. Let's go to the temple in Jerusalem and let's set up a throne. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, only the Father is the one who can decide the times and the dates. That is not for you to know. And so they didn't get the answer that they wanted. But Jesus continued. He continued encouraging them. He said, the Holy Spirit will come and give you power. You are going to be my witnesses to people everywhere. You are going to tell them about me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. He reminded them again of who he was, how he had suffered and died to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament, to fulfill what the prophets had said, and what had been written about him in the Psalms. And he gave them some very important final instructions. As he was getting ready to leave, Jesus told them that he has a job for them to do. 
The job description is in the Great Commission in the book of Matthew. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. The same instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples are the same instructions that he gives to us as his followers. We need to spread the good news about Jesus. We need to be obedient to God's word, and we need to teach others. The Holy Spirit living in us gives us the power to do that. Since Jesus knew that the disciples would get discouraged when he returned to heaven, he gave them a promise. Surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Yes, Jesus was going to be with them always. He promised that he would send the gift of the Holy Spirit to them to live in each believer and that they would have an amazing amount of power. Then he gave them a blessing. And do you know what happened next? I'd like you to use your imagination. We have the disciples gathered. They are listening to every word that Jesus says. And after he blessed them, he began to float up in the air. And as Jesus was taken up in a cloud from their sight, can you imagine the look on the disciples' faces? Can you imagine as they saw him go up into the clouds? They must have just waited and tried to get that last glimpse of him. Maybe they shielded their eyes so they could see just a little bit longer. You know when you have a balloon that's filled with helium and it slips out of your fingers? The same thing happens. You watch it. You follow it going up into the sky to get that last glimpse of it, just to see how high it's going to go. And maybe you shield your eyes again just to see it one last time. That's like what happened with Jesus. That's what happened with the raisins that we saw earlier in our lesson. They ascended to the top of the liquid. But the raisins fell back down, but Jesus did not fall back down. He did not come down. He was gone. What do you think it felt like to be one of the disciples as you stood there and watched him disappear? Do you think you were maybe a little sad because he was gone? Or did you wish that you could have gone with him? Were you wondering when he would return? Let's think back to sealing Jesus' body in the tomb. He was put in the tomb. I have three, three cups here that we're going to use, and I have a rock that's going to be Jesus. Jesus was put into that tomb. And then when they went to the tomb on resurrection morning, Jesus was not there. Where did Jesus go? Can you imagine the feeling of the disciples? Where? Where could they find him? They were confused. Where did he go? Did somebody take his body? Or did he really raise from the dead, like he had said? The same thing has happened again. Jesus was here. He was on earth. He was with them. And now he is gone again. Yes, they are confused. Do you think we would be a little confused too? Do you know where our Jesus stone has ended up? Do you think it's here? No, it's not. Do you think maybe it went here? Yes, there it is. Jesus is now in heaven and the disciples are left here on earth. We left the disciples gazing up into the sky and all of a sudden, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. These men gave the disciples a promise that day. Jesus would return to earth just as he left. 
He is coming back. The disciples did not realize how long of a time it would take for Jesus to come back. They thought, oh, you know, maybe a few days, maybe three years, maybe 10 years, maybe 30 years, maybe they didn't know. It's been over 2,000 years since Jesus ascended into heaven, and we are still waiting. But we know he's coming back because he has promised. We do not know when he will be back, but we need to be ready. Jesus had given the disciples some clear instructions. They had work to do. There was no time for them to lay on a blanket, staring at the sky, wondering where Jesus went. There was no need for them to sit around waiting for him to return. The disciples would miss having Jesus walk with them. They would miss seeing his face. But Jesus had told them that very soon God was going to be sending the Holy Spirit to them. And there's one really important thing, one more thing that we can learn from this lesson. The disciples obeyed. The book of Acts says that as Jesus went up into heaven, as he disappeared, they worshiped him. And then they obeyed. They went to Jerusalem, filled with great joy, and they waited. And while they waited, they praised God. They were all stirred up with energy and with excitement, just like those raisins that we saw earlier. They were so filled with excitement, so filled with joy. And even though Jesus ascended into heaven and the disciples could no longer see them, see him, he did not leave them alone. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with them. And Jesus does not leave us alone. When he died on the cross for our sins and was raised to life on the third day, and when we believe that, the Holy Spirit lives inside us and we're never alone. Wherever we go, Jesus is with us. Jesus understood what the disciples were feeling. He understands what we're feeling because while he was here, he experienced those same things. So when you're feeling lonely, maybe missing your friends, when you're going through a difficult time, you are not alone. He understands what you're going through. Jesus understands what life is like for us. He knew temptation, he knew poverty, frustration, weariness, rejection, sorrow, disappointment, ridicule, loneliness. And when we go through these things, Jesus is right there beside us. He's waiting to wrap his arms around us and give us the strength for whatever comes our way. He's only a prayer away. Let's close today with prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for all the promises that you have given us, especially the promise that you will never leave us alone and your promise that one day you will return. And while we wait for you to come back, help us to spread the good news of your love. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.